Well, victim impact statements are pretty much the only way those affected by crime can be part of the judicial process. But it may surprise you to know that victims are restricted in what they can and what they can't say. Tonight, how one Oshawa woman is using her own tragedy to help victims have their voices heard. And it was horrific. The blood was everywhere. There was brain matter everywhere. It was horrific. And I think that's what drives me. Lisa Freeman was just 21 years old when her dad, who was working at this Oshawa rooming house, was brutally murdered by this man with an axe in 1991. This is the original certificate of conviction, which says clearly life imprison imprisonment with no eligibility for parole for 25 years. Lisa has had 26 years of being a victim in the justice system, and she says a victim of the justice system. Somewhere along the line, um, the rights of victims have been surpassed by the rights of the offenders. And good evening. The man who was found not criminally responsible for the killing of Sergeant Ryan Russell. Lisa reached out to me after this story earlier this month. We don't get any kind of... Um, how does it affect you? They don't care how it affects us. The widow of Sergeant Ryan Russell forced to read a redacted victim impact statement at her husband's killer's parole hearing. The reality is that one chance for a victim to speak their mind is often muted by the law. You have to send them in 30 days before the hearing for approval and um, if they don't like something you've written, they will send it back to you. Uh, they have a whole load of guidelines saying uh, not to be too graphic, to keep it short. You can't bring photographs in of your, of your loved one. Most people would be surprised to know that the victim impact statement, what's in there, is actually guided by the criminal code. The criminal code is very specific about victim impact statements. It's not freewheeling. It's not meant to be a long, rambling rant about how to kill somebody or an eye for an eye. And very simply put, the document itself says what you're allowed to talk about and what you're not. I do a lot of public speaking at local libraries. Lisa has written a book called She Won't Be Silenced and coaches people on how to write powerful victim impact statements, learning from battles she has fought and won. In the panel hearing, um, I'm sitting less than 10 feet away from the man who killed my dad. And remember, I identified my dad in the morgue because so I had seen exactly what he had did. And the panelists introduced me twice by full name in front of this man. In a room I would expect it to be protected in, I wasn't. So they've had to change it. So all the um, websites, pamphlets, leaflets, information now state that on there. Now, the man who killed Lisa's dad has not yet applied for parole, but he is eligible. Lisa's just found out that he has been transferred to British Columbia, a small town just 12 kilometers from where her sister lives. She is fighting that transfer. We'll have details on how you can connect with Lisa on our website, citynews.ca.